Matt has a zirconia crown that the porcelain broke off the Interproxima and is getting food impaction, so we have to remove it. With an Emax crown, we're getting a full 400 megapascals of compressor strength because it's monolithic and the material is much stronger. For a traditional ceramic crown that we do here, we don't need to take that much tooth structure away because we're not worried about retention form as much as we are resistance form. With the Nexus cement or any of the dual clear resin cements that we're using today, it bonds to the ceramic very well and it bonds the tooth very well. We want our margins flat, glassy, smooth with a 90 degree edge. And there's our three minute polyvinyl siloxane impression. We have an upper and a, a lower with our preparation and this is what we call a buckle bite and we're gonna make these two teeth go together. So here is our, our 3D image of the prepared tooth. If I turn his tooth off, you'll see that tooth is angled in this plane and the software did it exactly right. His old crown broke right here. See where, where it's colored right there? So if you look at his opposing, he is bumping into that mesiolingual cusp. So we're going to reduce it a hair so that when he is in excursions, he's not beating up his teeth. So we're ready to press play and send it to the mill. So we have some glaze here, and we have to slightly dilute it with this liquid, just a tiny bit. We characterize the occlusal with stain to give it a third dimension to make it not look flat, not to put in stains, and just characterize the gingival third. If you can see it, it's almost too much. And this is gonna give us our gradation of color that we need. And for the occlusal, all I do is run a little bit of stain through the isthmus, again, so you can barely see it. it shows that there's a slight bit of a dimension there. When we put this in the oven, it goes from lithium metasilicate to lithium disilicate, and we have to have our margins supported or the crown may not fit as well. We have acid etched the intaglio of the crown with hydrofluoric acid for 20 seconds. This is part two. Okay. We're now going to use part one on the tooth for 20 seconds. If you use an overhead surgical light, it would be wise to filter it because you will start curing your bonding agent ahead of time. We leave retraction cord in whenever possible. It makes cement cleanup much easier. This goes on for 15 seconds. So when you're using part one, the dentin doesn't fully etch until you're past 15 seconds. So make sure you do it for 20 full seconds. Air dry. Donna has loaded the crown. Hold it in place, and she will tack cure it. If you'd like, you can wait two full minutes. We go after our interproximals first. Finger. Donna's going to put her finger down and hold the crown because the cement is not set yet. I use an interproximal carver to clean the cement. It all comes off in one piece. Look at the lingual just flakes off like that. And we're going to pull our cord now. If we get bleeding started now, we're already halfway home. It's sealed. Look at that margin. This, there isn't one. It's dead perfect. This is the brand new Cur curing light. It is very powerful. It, if you're using an older curing light, it'd be wise to have it measured and see how strong it is. So we want to check our occlusal contacts after we seat the crown. And open and lightly bite down. Slide really exaggerate, moving to the right and left. Good. And open. Awesome. How does that feel? Good. Kerr figured out the gel phase exactly right. It doesn't adhere to the adjacent tooth. The bonding process is the most difficult and it's the most technique sensitive and the most critical is the success of the crown. And with NX3, we're not as anxious about it. It's lowered our stress level.